When you think about the materials that make our modern gadgets work, you probably imagine metal wiring or maybe silicon circuit boards. You probably don't think about gemstones. Precious crystals may look beautiful in your collection or on your wrist, but that's where the usefulness of many of them ends. However, tourmaline is one of the exceptions. Under certain conditions, this mineral really is electric. Tourmaline is a kind of stone called a crystalline silicate mineral. Actually, it's a whole group of them since there's a lot of variety in what elements can be included in their crystal structure. The needle or prism-shaped crystals of tourmaline are forged, like many of Earth's finest gems, under some of the most extreme conditions our planet has to offer. And tourmaline comes in a range of colors. In fact, it's one of the most colorful gemstones in the world, covering everything from pinks and greens to blue and even black. Some of the most remarkable examples contain multiple colors in a single crystal. There's even a tasty looking variety called watermelon tourmaline with red and green sections separated by a band of white. All of this diversity is possible because of tourmaline's unique silicate crystal structure, which acts a bit like a cage trapping different mineral ions inside. That produces the different colors. For example, high concentrations of iron will give you black tourmaline, but in lower amounts, that same iron results in blue or green crystals. Manganese ions make pinks, chromium makes green, copper makes intense blue, and vanadium gives you yellows and browns. Now, tourmaline was first described in Ceylon, the island that is now known as Sri Lanka, and the name comes from the local word meaning stone of mixed color. But some people also referred to the gem as the Ceylonese magnet. Sometimes, if the concentration of iron is high enough in a tourmaline crystal, it can become slightly magnetic, but this isn't actually the reason for the nickname, because regardless of the mineral ions trapped inside, when a crystal of tourmaline is heated up, it can produce an electric charge that can attract or repel other charged objects, just like a magnet would. The effect is known as pyroelectricity. This bizarre phenomenon was first documented by the ancient Greek philosopher Theophrastus more than 2,300 years ago. But it wasn't until the 18th century that scientists started to really experiment with the electric properties of gemstones. One of those experiments showed how tourmaline crystals could attract hot ashes while leaving cold ashes unaffected. And reading up on the early experiments gave the SciShow team an idea, but we'll get to that in a minute. By the middle of the century, the famed taxonomist Carl Linnaeus began to relate this mineral behavior behavior to electricity. And brothers Paul Jacques and Pierre Curie discovered that it wasn't only heat that could persuade crystals to be electric, but also mechanical stress. They had identified piezoelectricity. If you squeeze a crystal to subtly change its shape, it can generate an electric charge. And the inverse is true as well. Running an electric current through a crystal would make it change its shape. The key to this seemingly magical effect is in the way the atoms are arranged in the crystal. And while this happens with a few other materials besides tourmaline, we'll use it as our example, the basic component of a tourmaline crystal is silicon dioxide. Silicon dioxide molecules form a tetrahedral or four-sided shape. For you tabletop RPG nerds, it is the shape of a D4 or a four-sided die. And while this is pink, it is not tourmaline, it is plastic. They've got their silicon in the middle and an oxygen atom at each corner. Those pyramids are all lined up in rows within the crystal, all pointing the same way. But the bonds between silicon and oxygen are unequal, and oxygen is more greedy with its share of electrons. So the bases of the silicate pyramids end up with a slight negative charge compared to their tips. Now, normally this is balanced out by positively charged metal ions between the rows of tetrahedra, the same ones that give the tourmaline its color. So a crystal sitting on your shelf won't have a net charge to it. But when you squeeze that crystal along its axis, the negatively charged pyramid bases and the positively charged ions get pushed together. The balanced center of charge gets separated, with the negative charges pushed a little bit one way and the positive charges pushed a little bit the other way. So you end up with a net positive charge at one end and a net negative charge at the other, which creates an electric voltage 
just like a battery. Squeezing or stretching the material can have this effect, but so can heating or cooling it, because heating something up makes it expand and cooling it makes it contract. Stretching or heating the material makes the spaces between the tetrahedra expand, offsetting the center of charge in the other direction and creating positive and negative charges at opposite ends of the crystal. The piezo and pyroelectric effect has since been found in many other materials as well as tourmaline, including quartz crystals and even bones. Today, a surprising number of our gadgets rely on piezo and pyroelectricity too. These electric materials don't need any external power sources since they get all the voltage they need from inside. Everything from infrared heat sensors, quartz watches, inkjet printers, and even barbecue lighters and musical greeting cards can have piezo or pyroelectric materials in them. But there's a downside, since tech that relies on piezo or pyroelectricity can be very sensitive to changes in their environment. Today, our gadgets don't typically use tourmaline crystals, but rather lab-made or more abundant natural piezoelectric materials. But that doesn't make the effect any less magical. And SciShow Rocksbox subscribers, more on that later, can play with pyroelectricity when they receive this month's mineral, tourmaline. Remember how I said those old experiments gave us an idea? Well, here's how to recreate the original Salonese magnet demonstration right at home. It's experiment time. Here's what you need. A fire safe container with a lid, tissue paper, matches or a lighter, tweezers or tongs, some water, and of course, tourmaline. Now, a quick note, we're going to be playing with fire here. You know, like literally playing with fire. So please be careful. You want to wear close fitting sleeves and tie back long hair. Set up your whole experiment in a clutter free area with lots of space around you. If you're inside, make sure there's no curtains or flammable stuff around. And if you're outside, pick a spot away from structures or flammable materials. And if you get nervous about the fire, just cover your container with that lid and step away. Covering it up will smother the flames. Okay, now to the fun part. Rip up a bunch of your tissue paper, toss it into your container, and let her rip. Safely, of course. Watch it closely to make sure no embers float out of your dish. Once all the flames are 100% out, pick up your tourmaline with the tweezers. Hold it close to one end, like this. You want to hover the crystal right over some of the hot ashes without touching them. If you aren't seeing anything right away, try flipping it around and using the other end. Since the crystal has a positive and negative side, one end will be more inherently attractive than the other. You can try this with more than one piece of tourmaline too, which means you can test if one of them works better than the other. When you're done playing around, the last step is to fill your dish with water and make sure the ashes get good and wet. This is to make sure the fire is 100% out because we here at SciShow do not want you to set your house on fire. If you give this a try, let us know. And if you don't know where to get tourmaline, you can get some in this month's SciShow Rocks Box. Every month, SciShow Rocks Box subscribers will get a rock, mineral, or fossil delivered to their house where they can put it on their shelf or wherever they put their rock collections. Mine goes on my shelf. We have a limited amount of boxes every month and they generally sell out pretty fast. So if you would like to subscribe, you can go to scishow.rocks. Thank you so much for watching. Now go, really, scishow.rocks, go.